Some might argue that, I mean, the, uh, we just looking at my phone, just uh, the Republicans, House Republicans already tweeted out that uh, Governor Hickenlooper has, has given uh, a, a buy, as it were, for a, a mass murderer. I mean, this, some would argue this isn't, uh, not only is it not politically correct, perhaps it's not even politically wise. Do politics have any part of this at all in your decision? No. I mean, every, every smart political advisor told me, whatever you do, don't do this. But, you know, you make a lot of these decisions not on the basis of politics, but on the basis of what's, what's right, what's moral and just, what's the best thing for the state of Colorado. Did you equivocate here at all by, by not granting clemency and, and going the other way, where the door is still open for somebody along the line to, to execute Nathan Dunlap? Well, we wanted to, I mean, I, I had a hard time between, you know, respecting the laws of Colorado, the people of Colorado, all the people who sat on juries, the expert witnesses, the defense attorneys, the prosecution attorneys. I mean, they all put in a tremendous amount of time. And I think, to a certain extent, you do disrespect them if you come in and just, you know, say, well, I think differently. Mm -hmm. So we tr really tried to look at every aspect we could. And by giving him a temporary reprieve, we're saying that work still held up. But there's other information out there that, that makes us balance this, balance this such as the, you know, there, there's no, no, there's, no, I mean, it's a question of justice, right? There is right. no uh, equality or equanimity in, in how capital punishment is applied. Some people right. do just as evil a crime, and they're never even forced to stand trial with capital punishment, they automatically go to life imprisonment without parole. You look at the, the, the what just the, all, all the issues around why some and why not others right. were very difficult. The Arapahoe County DA saying that justice in this case would be death for Nathan Dunlap. I assume you've had a long conversation with him and uh -huh. what we understand is that he it seems to be, not even, the word of appalled doesn't come to mind, but he seems to be stunned and, and bewildered by it. Well, and I, I understand, I spent enough time with him that I understand. I mean, the public doesn't understand, and for some people it doesn't make a difference. For me it made a difference, the fact that there's no study that demonstrates the deterrent value of capital punishment. In other words, if you have the death penalty, you don't have less likely to have a murder, right? You, you, that's, that's what I always thought, that's what I was always told. But we asked a number of different prosecutors, is there a study? Because there's a whole raft of studies that demonstrate there is no deterrence, right? So if it doesn't make you uh, safer, and you know, I mean, I, we talked to the victims' families, the victims and families, and heard, you know, how much they wanted this to be over and they right. wanted closure. Uh, and certainly, my heart goes out with them, goes out to them. But you know, we also heard, have seen numerous stories of people that, after the execution, they didn't get the closure they thought that they were going to get in numerous instances. So if it's not always giving closure, and you know, a number of the families of victims in this case didn't want the death penalty, didn't, right. didn't necessarily believe in it. If you're, not, if you're not getting closure, it's not a deterrence. If it takes 20 years and creates minor celebrities out of these killers, think about 20 years ago, wouldn't it have made more sense to have this individual put in jail for life without parole? The, the families of victims would have had to get closure and dealt with it but he's gonna be in prison, life without parole, and we'd never hear, we'd forget his name. We wouldn't know who he was now. 89148. 89148. That's who you've, you've called uh, Nathan Dunlap. This uh, situation is one in which the families are, um, Bob Crowell saying today, uh, knife's been in my back 20 years, it just got twisted today. What was that conversation like for you? Oh, it's very hard. I, and I, I feel so deeply for what they've gone through and uh, Again, there was no easy solution here. And if there was, I told him this when I was on the phone, if there, was, if there was anything I could do that, and I could still feel that I was the person I am, right? That I could make a decision that was, that I believed in that was moral and just, there's some way I could have gotten that knife out of his back and given him closure, I would. This is a system of checks and balances. You mentioned this in your news conference today, where all of this process has come to this point and you, not as a lawyer, but as the governor of the state of Colorado, look at the case and say, okay, this is my decision. I will grant clemency, I will, I will give this reprieve, uh, I will, whatever it is, I will let this go forward. And you chose to give the temporary reprieve. In this case, this still goes on for a while. Now, why, why now? You studied this for a year and you looked at it. Why? You're not a guy that I ever recall running on a, a no death penalty uh, platform. Well, I certainly, as you get immersed in the facts around death, the death penalty, you become more and more perplexed. It's not a deterrent. 
right? It doesn't bring closure to all the families of victims. In many cases, they're disappointed by it. It costs four times, five times more than just giving someone life without parole. So why are we doing it? Is, is there a benefit that comes from me saying yes, from me uh, executing this, this, this criminal, right? And I, I couldn't find it. And I think, you know, we had another 65 or 75 days to, to make the decision. When we talked to the families some weeks ago, one thing they said was, sooner is better, right? We're, we're, a decision. Yeah, we're sick of this. And I think that this, this uh, executive order will stand until rescinded. I'm not going to rescind it. Uh, I think it's unlikely that a future governor will rescind it. I think if the people decide and, and, and really demonstrate that, that decisiveness, that they, this is something that they are moving away from, like the, like the citizens of many states, then, you know, then that's the only time it will change. And that would be the will of the people. It wouldn't be one person. When we look you up in Wikipedia a year from now, will it say that on this date, Governor John Hickenlooper declared that he was against the death penalty in Colorado and actively worked against it? Well, certainly I, I've been trying to get someone to show me the benefit of the death penalty. And I can't find anyone who gives me compelling, you know, and I've listened to a number of prosecutors. Are you against it? Yeah, I, I don't think that there's a benefit from it. So I don't, I, I don't see why we will spend all this money and cause all this pain, extend the pain for so many people, for something that's not a deterrent and, and ultimately doesn't bring closure for so many people. One of the people at the news conference today was Stan Garnett, a Boulder County DA, who has said that he would support a repeal of the death penalty. Would you? Yeah, I think I would. I, it, everything I've seen shows that it's, it's not doing what people think it is, what, what people think it's there for. How do you feel about today? I mean, this has been an incredible day. You've worked for a year toward this. You know this is all coming down on your head. We already saw the, the Republicans jumping all over this. How are you going to weather these next few weeks? Oh, I, you know, there's so much else going on as well. I mean, we're, we're still not, we're not distracting our, 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 our vision from we've got to create jobs. We've got to help, you know, make this state more business friendly. We are very focused on everything we've been doing and we're going to keep doing. So. I mean, this is, was a hard decision because people feel so deeply about it. I felt so deeply about it. I mean, I you know, reached out to faith leaders and, 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 and talked to political, politically wise individuals. I talked to old friends who I just know and trust their judgment. Right. I mean, I invest a great deal of time, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we are, the state's moving forward, right? And we're, we're growing, we're building jobs. We've got to reform our education system. We've got to you know, make sure that we have a, a transportation system that works. We've got to figure out how to start controlling costs around healthcare. None of that's gone away. So right, right. tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up and, and you know, get right back in the saddle and, and start working as hard as I can on those things. And what are you going to say to those who will say, John Hickenlooper, uh, governor of Colorado, is soft on crime? Well, I, I don't think that certainly as my record as a mayor or as a governor, I, we've ever been soft on crime. What we're trying to do is figure out what are those systems at work? And when you arrest, when someone's gone off the tracks and done something wrong, what's the right punishment, right? And uh, there are those that'll say, well, this is just indications of him being a softy. Uh, I would argue that's wrong. Before we finish up, can you, is there one thing that you would like to say if you were talking to the folks at home right now about what you, other than what you said in your news conference today about your decision and how we move forward from this point? Well, I think that sometimes these, the, the most difficult decisions you have to make, whether you're, you know, uh, working in a restaurant or whether you're working as a governor, are the ones you grow the most from. from. And as difficult as this has been, and I've had some very difficult emotional times with various members around the issue. I've grown in ways I never would have expected. And that's part of what life's about, right? Is so it, if there's a silver lining from, from all of this, I think I understand cr crime and punishment at, at a much deeper level than I ever did. And I think it makes me a better person, hopefully a better governor.